Alright, how's it going guys? Been a little while. But I'd uh thank you guys for a little flight today. It's my birthday, so I thought uh I thought we'd go for a cruise. But uh I'm flying something a little unusual today. I'm flying a little Technam the uh, 2002 Golf. No, it's not a Golf, it's a Sierra. Yeah, I thought it'd be a unique opportunity to uh, to show you guys or talk about some of the nuances about flying a light sport. Um, I believe they make remarkably good training airplanes for a lot of reasons. So yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit more. I'm currently in New Zealand as well, which is uh, something different for you guys, I'm sure. Anyway, I'm gonna quickly do my run up here, get ready to depart, and then we're gonna fly to Tauranga, New Zealand, and uh, do a little scenic tour around the uh, the Carmandel. Should be a really, really beautiful flight. Up the brakes. A nice low level. So here, tracking straight for Thames, uh, going to be a lovely little flight. So something that's rather unique about light sports is they often get mistaken as uh, as toys, you know, airplanes that aren't very high performance, but they're actually quite the opposite. They have an unusually high power to weight ratio, uh, usually with the 100 horsepower Rotax, but there's a bunch of other options. Obviously, having that much power means you can sometimes get yourself out of situations where uh, you wouldn't normally be able to get out of. You know, power is a good thing. But that being said, I think it makes people more prone to actually getting themselves into situations, situations that they shouldn't because they always know and rely on that extra little bit of power. That amount of power means, you know, takeoffs, for example, you can't just slam the power in, you know. On, on this airplane, if, you, if I just went full power, it would literally just veer off the runway. The amount of P factor from the prop would literally just make it veer off the runway. That fundamentally makes it a high performance airplane, you know. You have all that power at your disposal. You have to manage that power, know when to use it. hard to slow down. A lot, a lot of the lessons or the forward thinking you need when you fly them is quite similar to flying something like a, uh, a Lancer or a Pitts or something or even just a 210, you know. You need to think ahead, you need to be ahead of the airplane, you need to prepare ahead of time. Otherwise you're going to end up at, you know, especially for landing, you're going to end up at your threshold. Uh, with an energy equation that is just not going to work out. On top of that, with light sports, what makes it even more interesting and therefore harder is you've got a very light wing loading. These airplanes are very light. And so you're very susceptible to um, outside influences. Turbulence, for example, wind shear, uh, crosswinds. All of these things affect these kind of airplanes a hell of a lot more than they do any other airplane. So. You know, those are the kind of things we got to keep in mind when we fly these things. You know, they, they were meant to be these groundbreaking, truly groundbreaking airplanes. They were meant to be affordable, they're not. Uh, and we can talk about that all we want. Um, you know, I'm trying my best to remedy that eventually. But, but once you actually own one, they become remarkably, remarkably affordable to fly. And that's where they really shine. And I think something that's happened, you know, they've sort of generated a bad rep because uh, they have, you know, not the best safety record. And honestly, I fully attribute that to uh, to just poor poor flight training, a poor standard of flight training. I I'm in a fairly unique position where I fly airplanes all around the world, VFR all around the world. It's one thing to fly IFR in different countries; it's a whole other thing to fly VFR. 
So I, um, I've i done light sport licenses in several different countries as well as PPLs and CPLs, but um, light sport specifically, and they, they fall under a completely separate category of flight training. Methods are different, syllabuses are different. And, uh, and honestly, it's subpar. It's not, these airplanes are not being treated with the amount of respect that they should be. And, uh, and I think that is ultimately what's attributing to that poor safety record. They have a bad rap for no real reason, you know, they they just require some respect, every airplane does. They're extremely affordable to fly, a lot of fun. In a lot of ways they're really forgiving, and some they're not. And yeah, they're just a good way to have recreational fun. I'd also love to see them get into flight training more because they teach a unique skill set um, that, you know, fundamental pilots could really benefit from. You know, I don't really have a mission except for eventually ending up in Taranga and it's just been so good. So I'm going to get ready for our arrival into Taranga here. Tracking along the shore here, we got the Mount, Mount Mangadui coming up. And so we're going to be chatting to the town real soon and we'll get ourselves set up. Unfortunately in New Zealand it's illegal to, uh, to record radio conversation. But I'm not allowed to uh, share my chit chatter with the uh, air traffic controllers with you guys unfortunately. Which is a shame because there's a real learning moment there. But, uh, but yeah, that's that is what it is. So we're gonna go land. All right, we're here. And that's an awesome way to spend a birthday. That was such a good flight. Such a good flight. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that flight. I really enjoyed it. It was good to just get out and fly for once with no real mission. Um, I should really do that more often. Um, just a quick note, if you guys are getting into flight training or thinking about getting into flight training, you should definitely consider the Sporties Learn to Fly course. Uh, by far the most comprehensive online ground school I've ever come across. I definitely recommend it. For more information, there's a link in the description. Uh, go check it out and uh, I'll see you guys next time.